Hello, friends. Welcome to Outside Perspective. I'm your host, Adam Meredith. Let's get to it. A couple housekeeping things to get us started. If you haven't, please subscribe to the podcast. You may be listening, but you may not be subscribed. So go over, subscribe to the podcast. Also, if you like the podcast, leave a five-star rating. Also, leave a review. These things help the podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you in advance. I want to take a second and tell you guys about my friends over at Jumbo Superfoods. Jumbo Superfoods is a California-based health food company that provides the highest quality cannabis-based products. But I want to tell you guys specifically about their CBD line. CBD stands for cannabidol. Cannabidol is one of the many cannabinoids found in the cannabis plant and has also been shown to have medicinal value, meaning it can aid in improving your health. The cannabis plant is an adaptogen, and CBD specifically has been shown to reduce inflammation, aid in mood regulation in cases of depression, but it can also reduce anxiety and stress, and has neuroprotective properties, meaning it can help the brain. It blows my mind when I think about all of the different things that this one plant can do. And this is just a small list of the benefits of CBD. Now, before I go any further, I know many of you have already heard the word cannabis and have automatically gotten worried. Let me put your worries to bed. You're asking yourself, will I fail a drug test? No, you will not. If you are buying high quality products, like those from Jumbo Superfoods, they use only premium ingredients, nothing artificial, nothing harmful. All of their products are made right here in the US and they are tested in a lab to measure for purity. You can actually go over to their website, jombosuperfoods.com, and see the lab results for yourself. Go check it out. And while you're there, you can check out their full line of CBD products. They have CBD spray. Their CBD spray is phenomenal. I like to put the cinnamon one in my coffee. Tastes delicious. They have CBD drops, both for you and your pets. They have a grass-fed ghee and MCT oil. Add that to your coffee. They have a lip balm. They have a muscle balm, which is my absolute favorite. I use the muscle balm after training jujitsu. I put it on my fingers. I put it on my sore muscles and such. It makes a world of difference. So remember, go over to jambosuperfoods.com. That's J-A-M-B-O-S-U-P-E-R-F-O-O-D-S, jambosuperfoods.com. Check them out. Use the link in the show notes. It helps support the podcast, so I thank you in advance. If you're a first-time shopper, use the code JOMBOLOVESYOU at checkout, and you'll get 15% off your first order. So one more time, go to JOMBOSUPERFOODS.COM. Use the link in the show notes. It helps support the podcast, and use the code JOMBOLOVESYOU at checkout to save 15%. Now on to today's guest. My guest today is actually also a friend of Jombo Superfoods. Leo Savage. I'm going to first read you a quick bio that I plucked from Instagram from another podcast that Leo has done. Um, Go check it out. It's uh, the Mike Bledsoe Show. It says, let me read this to you. Leo Yurkides, a.k.a. Leo Savage, is the creator of Mace Movement and founder of Steel Mace Flow. Leo is a Steel Mace coach based in Austin, Texas that travels all across America teaching his Steel Mace Flow system. His unconventional approach to training is based on his belief in function over muscle. This philosophy has led him to the use of tools such as kettlebells, battle ropes, sandbags, body weight, and his favorite, steel mace. Leo is a certified trainer through the Ana Academy in multiple disciplines, Ana Academy Foundations, Durability, Unconventional Barbell, Battle Ropes, Kettlebells, Steel Clubs, and steel mace. Now, Leo's a little bit different than some of the other guests I've had in the past, especially in the health and fitness realm, uh, because Leo is actually also my coach. Back in September, I went down to Austin for a steel club certification at the Ana Academy. Leo was also in attendance getting his steel club certification as well. And just that brief time And speaking with him and interacting with him, I knew that I had to further my mace knowledge by learning from him. And um, it's been a great experience just now wrapping up the online course. And I can say 
with a clear conscience that Leo is a fucking awesome coach. He knows Steel Mace and he teaches it well. And if you would like to also learn from Leo, you can actually go to his website, steelmaceflow.com, and you can check it out. He has a, a four-week online program. He has several packages there that you can choose from. Go check it out, steelmaceflow.com. Now, let's get to the podcast. Yeah, true, true, true. You don't want to force any conversation, do we? Leo Savage. What's up, man? How are you, brother? Uh, I am motherfucking fantastic, man. So this is day two of the On It Steel Mace certification. And uh, this isn't... How many have you done of this particular cert so far? This will be my fifth On It Steel Mace Mace. certification. Sixth, I'm sorry, sixth. Sixth for the Steel Mace... And you've done them all. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's beautiful to um to like be in this like in this setting and then um from an outside perspective I'm seeing them I've I've heard your name several times throughout the course. So how does that feel from your perspective to have done all of these and then slowly you're seeing your work being assimilated into the structure and like the coursework. Man, like just talk about an honor, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm always blown away when I have an opportunity, to, uh, just for example, uh, we did an introduction. We let everybody kind of say, uh, we sat in a circle and Shane says, all right, everybody tell me who you are and what you do. And there were just so many people that had to like just say, um, man, Leah was my inspiration. I started mm-hmm. fucking with the maze. And it, I mean, it's, a, it's an incredibly rewarding feeling online, you know, at... Uh, I mean, it makes me really happy to receive like Instagram uh, yeah. support, support messages. And, uh, you know, really I've titled them as support messages rather than like people hitting me in my DM or, you know, it's just really an act of support. Like if somebody takes out of their own life to sit in front of their phone and send a message they have no idea will ever be answered, right? right. So they're like giving love knowing they'll never be able to re- you know they might not ever receive it right um so you know um it's always great to make those contacts but to have people in person uh that i have no clue who they are yeah you know just like hey man you said this thing and i'm here yeah you know? dude i mean you're uh you're like you're, you're a legit celebrity in the space now is mm. that is that feel weird to uh to have a very because you've had very humble beginnings right yeah. To to work your way up to a point to where, and not to say that this is where, you know, the end all of like where you want to be, because I'm sure you have more goals and you want to reach higher things, but to, to at least check in and, and to have that, like, is it is it very like gratifying to, to like kind of be in that place after all of these years of work? Yeah. I, you know, um, I don't feel like a celebrity or famous or... I do feel that I inspire people. Yes. So I okay, I'm famous, or I have some celebrity for doing acts of uh, inspiring. Yeah. Uh, and I don't really notice it, so I don't really take it in. But every now and then, um, like I met a guy this uh, certification, and he like lost his shit for a second. You know, he I got close to him, and he kind of recognized it was me. Mm-hmm. And then I, hey, what what's up, man? And right. He went gah. He like literally like just reverted to making a sound because he met someone cool and I can relate to that like getting to see uh, Lance Armstrong. Yeah. Like when I saw him, I was just like, "Golly, <laughs> you know that's, that's fucking Lance." Yeah, I, I mean, every now and then I might notice it a little bit, but I do notice it more so, like on the side. Like we talked about the people recognizing me but then you also brought up like the honored academy referencing me for their evolving curriculum right so i definitely noticed that my work as far as like yeah like hey leo calls it this we're gonna call it this and yeah i definitely feel it in in that regard and and i'm really blessed you know that my my whole deal is i don't care 
how I inspire people, whether it's through contact from somebody else, like I empower a coach or I teach somebody. I don't need the credit. I mean, I would love to elevate somebody else's life and be in the background. But yeah. So, you know, although it's great for them to, like, give me recognition, I'm happy to be part of the process. And, yeah. you know, coming here, um, you know, my goal is to lead by great example. You know, when it's time to do moves, I want everybody to know exactly how these things are going to look. Yes. And that it's okay. Like, man, Lynn, Leo is intense as a motherfucker when he grabs his mace. I want people to know it's okay to, to go there. Mm -hmm. For me, the mace is not mace, but movement is an expression. You know, like you're walking. It's like this regular movement, but everybody expresses themselves differently when they walk. Yes. In their normal walk. But there are different levels of that expression. My angry rock, I'm in a hurry walk, I don't give a fuck walk, I just smoke the joint walk. Yeah. They're all different expressions of movement. So for me, um, I love to express myself in, in movement. And so letting people see like, man, you can do that. Uh, it's a powerful thing. Um, you, you know, um, yeah, I just, and I love coaching. You know, it, on it's called me up a couple times to present information. It's just, it's rewarding, you know, being one of my goals to, um, to coach for on it. You know, that was a, like a long time goal for me. And, you know, I just ran into a place where it wasn't going to be an option. And so, you know, I was really left with the conversation. Okay, well, I can continue to support on it, but to what avail? Yes. Like, I'm not going to get a job with them no matter how hard I work. And I said, well, okay, but that doesn't mean I don't have to support them but if i'm going to support them i don't want it to be a sacrifice to be of service so how am i being of service for myself to come here it makes me feel like a human like an amazing human it makes me an amazing human to coach people uh, to inspire people to do something right or make a positive change or you know, most importantly express their, themselves yeah uh, when they need to and i think um even though, you know, maybe, you know, the intention was to, to get that job at on it, it seems as if, for better or worse, however, that, you know, it can be viewed from all aspects, but, like, you've attached yourself to on it. Like, you've come down here, mm. um, like, you, you, you make yourself available, like, mm. you're just, you, you, you give when you're here. And it's, um, I, I feel like a lot of people know if they come to on it at this point, like, they're probably going to see Leo Savage when they're here. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, you're right. You know, for better or worse, let's talk about the better. Yeah. You know, fuck the worse. Like, let's talk about the reality. The reality is I built an amazing program, mm -hmm. an amazing human being in myself, and amazing human beings from the lessons I learned in chasing that goal. So, you know, I talk about like, um, hey, we're evolving, man. Like, right now, we're evolving. We're learning new shit. We're going to mm -hmm. be different humans when we leave. So if I'm evolving my goal, right, to work for Onnit, it can evolve too. Right. My goal for Onnit was like I want to certify people in steel mace. Well, okay, I'm not going to be able to certify people in steel mace for Onnit, but just take out the part I can't do. Well, I can't work for Onnit. That doesn't mean I can't certify people in steel mace. Right. And, uh, you know, and Onnit's one of these. Uh, you know, when I say Onnit, it, it, let me take that away. John Wolf and Shane Haynes, the driving force, the fitness chief fitness officers, and on it. I love those guys in that uh, they've helped me to get where I am, and even recognizing there is some diversity. You know, I'm not going to work for them. Yeah, we're still great friends. Right. I show up at the gym. I'm happy to see everybody. Um, the cafeteria treats me great. You know, I'm, I'm in touch with all the coaches and. Um, you know, the it just worked out better for everybody. That, yeah. And let's be real. I'm Leo Savage. I'm going to do what the fuck I want. And there would have been a point in chasing this dream and accomplishing this dream that there would have been conversations. Leo, HR is really not up for you being as savage. Could you go a little less savage? Not a fucking option. Yeah, you can't. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's just all, all in all, it's a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. So... I want to go back a little bit because we just jumped right in. And for the listeners who don't know who mm -hmm. Leo Savage is, I would like to, well, one, I would like to hear your explanation of 
what is a mace? I get that question all the time, and maybe it's a simple answer, but I want to hear it from the fucking savage himself. Tell the people what a mace is. The mace is the ultimate weapon of destruction. It's blunt force trauma. It's this medieval weapon. You know, when I found out about the mace, it was simple. It wasn't an exercise tool. It was a weapon for combat. And it is. Like, you can totally smash somebody with a mace. Yeah. You can't get one on a fucking plane, right? You can get a kettlebell on a plane. You can't get a mace on a plane. Right. Yeah. So, it's a weapon. And you swing it beautifully. Yeah. Uh, there's like, so the mace in itself, like, just let me describe it. My favorite mace in the whole world is the Amit Academy mace. Not just because of my relationship, but I think it's the right equipment for the job. Uh, the Onnit team did a great job of building the handle. Anybody can build a glava still, mm -hmm. but the handle really makes a mace. What's different about the Onnit mace than some other maces is its off-balance nature. There is virtually no weight in the handle as compared to the top. So just looking at the design of the mace, there are opposites, and they work together. So just for that as a starting point, as you start looking into application of the mace, you start discovering things aren't the way I thought they were. You know, uh, for instance, our bow and arrow, a lot of times you would think you would be pressing with your left hand when you're actually pressing with the opposite side. Yeah. There's all these different lessons in we always think about the heavy shit and we don't think about the light thing. But in fact, having control over what makes the mace the mace, the handle, uh, opens a new light to it. There's just so many levels into this medieval weapon. Yeah. When I say medieval weapon, like, I just love that. Because well, whenever you say mace, you think of, like, barbarians, right? You think of Vikings. Mm -hmm. like, fucking Vikings. Swing shit castle. around, fucking shit up. And, but you never think of the Queen of England. That's true. She has a, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but she has a mace. No, we have not talked about this. Yeah, so every king had a mace. Every queen had a mace. Because it was the ultimate sign of uh, a combatant, right? So there was a knife. They made the knife. The knife stabbed through the skin. All right, we've got to make thicker skin. We made leather. Okay, we got leather. Now we have armor. Well, the knife can't go through the armor. Right. All right. Well, let me get a sharper knife. Okay, the sharp knife goes through the leather. Well, we need better skin. Chain mill. Okay, we made fucking chain mill. Nobody can stab me now. You're right. But blunt force trauma still works. Like, if you think of a bullet, it's oh, like yeah. a projectile that's this solid mass, a lot like a mace, that is projected out. So, it didn't matter how important the armor got, blunt force trauma was the deal. If you look at the royal scepter, it's a gold mace with jewels on it. Yeah. But it is literally the samurai sword, if you will, of the mace. So the steel mace, we talked about its uneven nature, like how different it is. It's weightless on one side. It's heavy on the other side. Vikings, queens. Yeah. Very, very That's different true. expressions from one into the other, which leaves everybody in the middle. Yeah, I never really thought about it um, in that regard. Whenever I do a lot of, uh, like, most of my research on the mace always points me to like Southeast Asia and the yep. Gata. Yep. So it's it never. But yeah, Vikings swing maces as well. War hammers. Knights had plenty of them. Yeah, absolutely. Now you started with a hammer, right? I started with a hammer. Now I'm here. Great story about that hammer. I'm trying to buy it. I visited. I visit. I revisited the gym where this all started earlier this year in October. And I walked into the gym. And there the sledgehammer was that I first started with. I, I started with a hammer. Wow. They wouldn't let you buy it? I, I didn't ask. Oh, okay. And I, didn't want, I knew that because I was doing work mm -hmm. that there would have – well, I didn't know. I'm sure my buddy would have been completely fucking happy giving me the I hammer. I just gave it to you. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, I just didn't feel like it was the right thing to do. So yeah. I wanted to like buy him a hammer, send it to his work, and then see if I could get – that one from them. Yeah. Because, you know, it's just, I have to, I mean, I got to have it. Yeah, I can dig it. Yeah. I can dig it. Do you like to have, like, um, do you like to keep little, uh, like, memorandum type things kind of as, uh, like, little markers of your journey? I do. Um, so I've got, 
All right, so back when I was a combatant, I used to do mixed martial arts. I always had this uh, neat world I'd go into, right? So, you know, kind of like Superman. He's like this regular dude, and then he goes into battle, and he has to put on a costume. Most warriors, right? They have their regular clothes, and they have to go into battle, and they put their armor on. Right. And their war paint. So as a martial artist, our armor, the armor, was the gloves, the wraps, the shorts, the cup, mouthpiece. the ankle bracelets, the mouthpiece, and the shirt. You get one shirt to wear out to the cage. It is the one thing we're going to take away for you, from you before you fight. I always thought of the shirt as my armor. What armor am I going to wear into battle? I'm going to wear my holy armor. You know, I'm going to wear my lucky jersey. You know, So this is something that people are familiar with. You have that special shirt. Yeah. So shirts were one for me, collecting shirts. Um, just to kind of finish up that story... The Vaseline, I always thought, was the war paint. That was my favorite part about going into a fight. Like that moment, that, you close your eyes. Yep. They fuck, you take a deep breath. They're putting the Vaseline yes. on. It's like, oh, it's fucking on now. Dude, I mean, I always, I just remember them putting their thumb in the Vaseline and like pushing it into my yeah. eyebrows. And I was like, fucking war paint, baby. Yep. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, so shirts were the thing. The thing, And, uh, you know, you actually gave me a couple shirts. So maybe you, you've heard that story before but i had not but yeah. um i did how meaningful I, well maybe i did hear a version of that and i think about it you know what i lied because i think you did an instagram live and you went through a handful of shirts that mm. are very meaningful to you yeah and um yeah so i kind of picked up that that feeling from you um, I, I did though i started a new hobby right you would think leo you must have millions of mace um, i think but my if you listen to my mission statement, the last part of it is put mace in hands. I have been giving out every mace that I've ever bought. Um, I can't tell you how much money I've spent on mace, but there'll be a special person who comes into my life, like Harbeats from Am Amsterdam. Cool ass dude. I gave him a mace. Oh, beautiful. All my students in Albuquerque that I left, I gave them my personal mace. Oh, wow. So for me, I've never collected mace. And, um, I was in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and um, I just remember, uh, so Albuquerque, New Mexico is where I started my mace journey, and we had a pretty good mace squad there. I ended up uh, getting fired from that job, and there were all these mace just sitting in the gym, and I always told myself, fuck, if I could just rescue those mace, I have people who need them. Yeah. So while I was there... The gym that uh, I went back to where it all started was under new management. They got new owners. And um, so I went back in. There wasn't anything weird, you know, being fired from this place, coming back in. No, no, no weird vibes at yeah, all. Yeah, no, no weird vibes at all. Actually, it was a really good homecoming. And um, I was like, you know what? I'm taking one of these mace home with me. And so, you know, I asked the owner. I said, hey, I'm going to take this mace and a T-shirt. And he goes, absolutely. So that mace... I remember the handle on this mace, right? These mace I got, this one mace I got from Albuquerque. The handle is unmistakable, right? So most gyms have a thing uh, that they'll set barbells in. So uh, whatever this barbell holder, it like sits on the ground, it's square, and then there's just holes in them where you stuff like the barbells in. Cylinders. Yeah. So they bought one of these to hold the mace. Well, the mace handles were getting scraped on the metal Mm. So whenever you would put one in, it would literally just like n take off the knurling. So the knurling on that handle, I remember picking it up and it was like uneven from being slotted over and over. And I was like, oh man, I remember this feeling. I spent so much time with these. And so I took one of those mace home with me. And yeah, that's the plan. Um, I'm going to start collecting my mace and uh, titling them, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I just... I want my own mace. Do you ever foresee a uh, a Leo Savage branded mace in the future? Yeah, I actually brought the prototype with me. So you see how there's that shiny one over there? Yeah, no, yours is super shiny, dude. So the idea would be it would catch um, picture more. Oh. You know, like photos and videos. Um, there's a couple color options I'm looking at. Uh, I do... I would love to have the mace, but I just have to... I, you have to understand this if you're getting into the mace business you're not going to make any money selling mace. I can get a mace for about 9 bucks. Um I can sell it for 40. But 
Do you know how many how much shipping is on those fucking things? Dude, trying to get anything manufactured overseas is a fucking hassle. I, I mean, going I going through customs. I have the ability to do it, but yeah, like if I order the mace, right? I bought my first batch. Uh, I have to wait three months for them to get here. Right. And then if they get checked, you know, I might wait two or three more weeks. Mm-hmm. So predicting orders, I would have to buy, you know, yeah, fifty thousand dollars worth of mace. To turn like a great profit, or and to keep things in stock. Yeah, the sheer volume that you have to to buy yeah. just to make it anything like that like feasible. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But do I want to do it? Yes. It's What's doable. my goal to put mace in hands? Unreasonable goals, right? You know, because really, I was like, man, yeah, you're right. Unreasonable goals. I was like, I can't give everybody a fifty dollar mace. No. It's but I am. <laughs> He's like, I'm doing it anyway. I'm do- so fuck. I'll build my own. I can sell myself my own mace, and yeah. And you know, if I ever have somebody that needs a mace, yeah, I can do it. Did you keep build. that mace that that guy gave you that you can smoke out of? I did. Okay. Yeah, that was actually what started. I had two students give me mace right. that very or that week. Um, there's this guy, Sean McPherson. He lives in the United Kingdom. He is a very humble living dude, and he is a metal artist. Makes all kinds of neat metal stuff. Fences, fucking cages, st- steel mace that you can smoke <laughs> weed out of. The coolest fucking mace I've seen. Dude, yeah. So he made a he made a mace, and he made the handle look like a samurai sword. Like, they stripe a samurai sword with, like, this clay and cook it so it has, like, a neat finish to it. And then, yeah, the top comes off, and you can smoke weed out of it. Yeah, that's cool. So he gave me that mace, and then my other student, Ian, he gave me the smallest mace I've ever seen. It's like pin size. No. Oh. But I was like, cool. I can take my mace with me on a plane. Yeah. So I have this tiny pocket-sized mace I take on a plane. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Now, you told me you told me a pretty cool story um, last time mm. I met you. Uh, well, when I first met you, which was back in September – at here at, at on it at the Steel Club certification, just for the folks listening, um, we were sitting out there at the cafe area, and you, you had a pretty cool story about your tattoo on your hand. Yeah, so it, it feeds into your mission, right? It does, man. Like as you get to know Leo, there's always like a double meaning. There's always a deeper level of besides besides the thing. I have a mace tattooed on my hand, on the back of my hand. I remember getting it. Um, I got fired from my job. I started the small on- online business, teaching mace, and I was like, I'm I'm going to get a mace tattoo. And we went and we drew out the tattoo, and we started putting the tattoo on different spots of my body, and I was like, yeah, I don't like it, yeah, I don't like it. And I, the whole time, I was just like, it's the size of my hand. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it's the size of my hand. And then my tattoo artist and my girlfriend at the time, they both looked at me with a huge smile, and they were like, get it on your hand. And uh, my girlfriend at the time, she was the sensible one. So just hearing her say, yeah, that's the right choice. And I was like, oh, okay. And I get the tattoo on my hand. And, and I'm not, I don't try and pretend something I'm not. If something hurts, I have no problem saying it hurts. My hand tattoo is the most therapeutic body work I've ever had. Like the most relaxing, just letting tension out. I mean, yeah, just felt amazing. But and the idea was it like you know, whenever I shake hands with somebody, I'm right-handed. I put my right hand out. My tattoos on my right hand. They literally have to shake my tattoo of a mace, which is a double meaning for putting mace in hands. Putting mace in hands just by shaking. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I had that same experience with my forearm tattoo. Yeah, and I don't know if mine maybe for a different reason. Like. There's this all this societal pressure, like you shouldn't get tattoos in certain places. Yeah. And um, like I was working in a corporate office nine to five. But whenever I got that, it was just like this big, almost this like big fuck you to society. And it just felt like this big, re- like just this release of pressure. Like whew, I just did that. I think there was the fuck you, but then at the end of it, it, it was like I'm good. Yeah, I'm me. This is this is who I am. Right. It's like this realization of and self. The, you know, the neat thing about those things is like I'm a little jealous of bikers. In right. what way? Right, because most people don't hang out with them. Like, they have their own style. People literally stay away from them because they are fully aware of who the biker person is. Mm. Now, we all know that there's a huge variety in bikers. There's, like, you lawyers. and Oh, yeah. But if you see somebody in a 1% jersey. You know who that is. Yeah, you don't fuck with them. Right. 
you choose not to sit by them. You self-select out of them. So I think it's just neat. They have this. They've had this identity for years, mm -hmm. and you know not to fuck with them. Yeah, I think people who um, are themselves make other people uncomfortable. Like people who aren't as comfortable with themselves, when they see somebody being them authentic selves, for yeah. some reason it makes them feel uncomfortable. Well, you don't know how to do it. Yeah, I think is the thing. You know, like I always remember the story of the story. Who knows? Right, the pilgrims, yeah. right? They're pulling up in their boats. Right. There's all these indigenous people. They've never seen a boat like that before to a point where a lot of these people froze in fear, supposedly. Right. Because they just couldn't comprehend what they were seeing. Yeah. So sometimes it's just uncomprehensible. And that in itself breeds a little bit of fear, a little bit of the unknown, a little bit of insecurity. So, yeah. So we um, kind of segue in into from there. You mentioned the samurai. We know the samurai earlier, mm -hmm. and um, you have a very big samurai tattooed on you. What what is the samurai t like to you? Like what is that for Leo Savage? And kind of how has that played a role in in you and in like your development, who you are? So, all right, I've heard this thing unlearn, and I love it. You know, you have to unlearn things. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about unlearning, but we'll talk about the samurai. When I was in martial arts, you, know, you got to choose your weapon, and I was in karate, and I wasn't good with anything. I ended up attaching to the samurai sword. Not because I was like good with it, or it was my favorite weapon, or my name is Leo, and the Ninja Turtle Leonardo had samurai swords. But I just identified with the samurai. I thought like the coat of arms that the samurai had was beautiful. But this is what the samurai was all about. Sacrifice for service. Like I will sacrifice myself at any moment for my leader or for my boss. If you want me to commit seppuku, like ritual suicide, right? it's an honorable thing to sacrifice yourself. So I always thought it was awesome to sacrifice wholly to really pour into something. So for me, it was martial arts. I always identified the spirit of the samurai. I don't think a samurai versus modern day infantry would last at all, but he would do a really good job of dying Yeah. in, in that process. So we talked about unlearning. I love the samurai for that aspect, and it really helped me develop into who I was. But understanding that Leo, you do not need to make sacrifices to help anybody. Matter of fact, because you're making sacrifices, your capacity for helping people is fucking you up. Right? You can only give so much, man. you got to receive love, too. Yeah. So, uh, even though I, I mean, I'll never let go of my samurai spirit, man, you know, till, till I die. Yeah. And uh, But that doesn't mean I can't pick and choose the things that I think are important. Right. Yeah, I love, you know, obviously, the whole, uh, you know, the Bushido code and honor. Mm -hmm. But I think that is a good point. Like, you can't serve um, at a sacrifice to yourself. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's a huge point. When did, when did that, that turn come for you? When, when sacrifice you, for service? Oh, uh, yeah. When did you, when did you real like, when did you have to unlearn that you, did, that you don't have to sacrifice to be of service? So this all happened relatively... Um, I don't know, man, like two months ago. Pretty recently. Yeah, I took this uh I took this course, the strong coach course with Mike Bledsoe and it just it changed the game. Yeah. You know, like I have all these nice insights and I have all these ideas and I have all this direction. I have purpose, but I don't have any laser sights on all of those things. So going through that strong coach program, I felt like a laser guided missile. In all of the things I was fuzzy about, they were just very clear. And just really having, putting myself as a student and having a mentor and having a coach uh, was a big shift for me. Yeah. You know, and it was just a real simple conversation of, um, this shit works for me. You don't have to do it. Do it. And it worked. Nice. Nice. That's um, Mike. Uh, Mike Bledsoe has a really good program with that. Is that something that you'd recommend to to all coaches? I think it's important for all coaches to have a coach. Yeah. So I wouldn't recommend it to all coaches, um, just because it's a play of words, right? So when we say coach, we think like PE coach, 
when we go back to our childhood memory, we all had a PE coach. We all had a high school phys ed coach. It's a requirement. Those, some of us had electives to where we chose to be on sports teams. Some of us paid outside of pocket to be in martial arts. And we had coaches our whole life. I want you to understand that coach doesn't necessarily mean the person who taught you the skill. Like for me, a coach was a mentor and mm -hmm. a father figure and somebody who kept me out of trouble. So when you say coach, I would just def redefine that. You don't need to be an athletic coach to go into this program. Do I recommend the program? I, yeah, I recommend it based on my results. Um, they have a really neat process of you get a week free. So you can kind of decide if it's for you. And then the coaches, they really want great growth in their community. Yeah. So there's an interview process you go into. And if it's not for you, well, as nice as it would be to take your money, taking your money and not giving you any results is going to hurt us and or hurt them in the back end is what I would think. Right. So facilitating growth for people who need it. You know, um, I would say put yourself in a position to be vulnerable and judge and say, what do you got? Here's what I got. Right. Let's let's match cards and see how many pairs we can make. I've uh, I've definitely prescribed it to a bunch of friends, and I just really describe it like if you're a coach and you have an amazing skill, and you're stuck, it's for you. Cool, cool. So we're on lunch, and I want to be cognizant of time, and yep. I, I definitely want to get one or two more questions in. Okay. Um. Uh. Right now, you have your system, uh, Steel Mace Flow. So I would like for you just to, just to the folks listening, walk them through, um, you know, what your mission is and, and, and what you're trying to accomplish and the things that you're doing with your work. Just make the people aware. Well, let's talk about my mission statement. Yes, let's, and then, let's talk about and your mission. And then we'll, once we get that out there, we'll be able to dissect it. Let's do that. All right. So back in the day when I started my Mace journey, it was a solo journey. And like most artists, solitude is important for creating. So when I wrote my mission statement originally, it was for me. Inspire, educate, put mace in hands. I was to inspire people, do cool stuff. They'd come see me. I could educate them and put a mace in their hands. My fitness journey really changed when I fell in love with the mace. So offering people that same bridge, um, it, it's, it's important to me. However... As I continued my mission, I started to gain students. So it was no longer a solo mission. It was there are many of us doing this mission. So therefore, the mission statement, we talked about our goals evolving. The mission statement evolved. In going through this process of rebuilding myself, creating myself, uh, I was in a very dark place. And movement, meditation, breathing building a relationship with my el myself to empower others, healed me. It got rid of my depression, my anxiety, uh, my low self-esteem, my social anxiety. I mean, just I had all these problems, you know. Um, and you might have never seen them because like, I'm a fit guy. But uh, don't let the outside fool you. You know, there's things going on on the inside of people no matter how they look. So after healing myself through this movement and like I went like hey that was really cool I got to do that for me I'm going to teach the skills to everybody else so they'll do cool stuff as I started teaching people the cool stuff I started to notice the same personal growth my, my students started healing they started raising their heads a little higher their posture changed you know they fucking bought a new car got a new job moved across town took a big risk like believed in themselves and so I was really just stuck with a puzzle. I got this movement practice, and there's all this positivity going on. So it's really a matter of dissecting it. What am I inspiring people to do? In the Steel Mace Flow curriculum, I show you the moves. I show you the shapes. And then I let you create whatever you want with them. So the fitness regimen is expressing yourself. Right? So you have to express yourself in order for this to work. I think the guy who the girl who wants to really work on their body they can work on it all the time but it's probably a mental health issue that got them in bad shape in the first place right 
So let's attack the mind, all right? How can I make the mind in a way that the body will celebrate the rewards of the mind? Well, I can't just coach people on the mind. I have to give them something. So we gave them the power of creation. You don't have to move like me. You don't have to walk like me. You don't have to do the flows like me. But here are all the pieces do them like you. So we inspire people to create. The act of creation gets people out of survival mode. I tie things with uh, survival mode, like all the negative things I said earlier, fear, anxiety. Depression. Uh, depression, man. You know, um, you know, people don't think, man, I'm in survival mode, but, man, you're wearing all fucking black, bro. You, you know, you, your sl shoulders are slumped over. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little depressed. Yeah, it's survival mode, man. You can get out of survival mode. Well, when you talk to someone who's depressed, you ask them how they're doing. Oh, I'm surviving, man. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a thing, meaning I'm making it paycheck to paycheck. I'm barely making it. I'm, sur I'm surviving. So, you know, we empowered people to create because creation gets you out of survival. Well, if you can create and you can express yourself based on example, you can heal yourself. Inspired to create, we educate to heal. And now I empower coaches to put mace in hands rather than myself. So that's what we do. We teach movement, a movement practice that emphasizes getting to know yourself. And once you get to know yourself, you can heal yourself. And once you can heal yourself, share it with others. Absolutely. And, um, and that's beautiful, man. And um, as, as one of your students um, in, in your Steel Mace Flow program now taking it, I can definitely say... Um, I, I love the, the structure and the approach, and I love how you, you, you're coaching the mind first, and then you're giving us these pieces to, like you said, to create, to heal. Um, I think it's just a beautiful thing, man. Um, so as the folks listening might be able to hear, <laughs> lunch is coming to an end. Yeah. So um, I just want to leave the floor with you. Anything you'd like to plug, leave the people with? How can people get a hold of you, ask questions? The floor is yours. I would like to say a couple of things. So. Sure, please do get a hold of me if you're curious about what I do. You can always find me on Instagram, Leo, two underscores, Savage. If you look up Leo Savage on Instagram, you'll find a guy with a mace. That's me. Um, I also have a site, stillmaceflow.com, and that's where all my latest and greatest work will be. Um, this, this is awesome. Thanks for doing this. Here's a plug. Yeah, dude, uh, and all this will be in the, in th the notes, too. Thanksgiving so. Day weekend. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, because Cyber Monday, we're doing a half-off sale on the website. Not everything, but most things are half-off. Um, and then this will tie it together. The reason why I can afford to sell my product for half-off is because I'm doing okay. I'm not rich, but I have money in my pocket. And I love this saying, do something beautiful with your strength. So here I've had a little bit of success. All right, well, my mission is to empower people. It's not to make a bunch of money. But it's through that money that I can, I can help people. Yes. So you don't necessarily need money to have beautiful acts. But I would just encourage everybody to do something beautiful with the strength they have. Do something beautiful with your strength. You might help somebody, you know, at the airport, pick up their bag. You might open a door for somebody. You might just say hi to somebody. Because, in fact, you have a skill or a resource doesn't mean you have to help somebody. But if we all did that, it would be a great, be a great fucking world. Yeah, man, we would be a whole lot more beautiful if we did. Yep. Absolutely. Great. Yep. Well, thanks again. And uh, all right, everybody, until next time. All right. Appreciate it. Hey, let's do this again, though. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. We'll, we'll make it happen again for sure. Definitely. I know we had to cut it short, but uh, all right. thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, again, go subscribe. Go leave a five-star rating and review. Thank you. Now, it's been a little bit, but I actually have a song to leave you guys with. I had a rock pop band from Melbourne, Australia called the Phosphines send me this. Um, this song is from their second album, which they released this year, 2018, uh, called Finally a Friendly Shore. And this song is called You Have Mail.
Jobs would for we-